So, okay. Um, I'm Sushi. Um, I, um, I'm Sushi. Um, I'm talking about um, the testing framework today, which looks a lot like Perl, but actually isn't. It's written by David Wheeler, which you may know from, for example, Bricolage. And he has written a very nice testing framework, both for Postgres and for MySQL. And um, it's basically a unit, unit testing framework for databases. So it doesn't run really on Perl, but um, it runs standalone on whatever database you've got, if it's Postgres or MySQL. You just install it and then write tests, and this is where the interest um, about Perl comes in, because it's for starters a tub-based framework. So um, if you actually run it, it looks completely familiar. So anything you see here doesn't really look differently from anything you've got from test more, for example, or anything else you've you're using in Perl. So the interesting part with um, the Postgres framework is it's um, it's very similar to the way Perl testing works in general. And um, I think Perl testing is very, very nice because it's very cheap to do um, based on the simple things like okay, is, isn't, like, unlike, compare things. You can whip up a lot of very nice tests, which are actually not stupid at all, even though they are really, really simple. So, um, also, Perl testing exists on literally every level of the software you can imagine. For example, in my last job, I've written a test framework which was based on the testing in Selenium to simplify um, GUI testing over a couple of browsers running in. Um, on different hosts to test a very large um, web-based GUI application, for example. You can also simply test somewhere in the middle all kinds of things. Um, you can test databases um, via DBI or via DBX class, of course. So um, what you've got in Paul's testing culture is um, this very cheap and easy and fast, it's easy to learn, it's really fast um, to write, for example, so you just sit down and whip up a couple of dozen of tests. For this simple presentation, I've written um, 45 tests, for example, in, I don't know, six hours or something like this. So this is something what um, David Wheeler's tool reflects very much. So if you're used to power testing, you will immediately ease into um, PGTAP um, and MyTAP respectively. So what you are doing is um, you look at your database, and a database usually has really a lot of things. It has a couple of databases, if you know. It has schemas, um, it has roles, groups, and users, grants, and permissions. It has, of course, your tables and your columns. It has types and checks and constraints. It has indexes and sequences. Um, you write, for example, in Postgres, lots of um, functions in different languages, of course. Um, you write your triggers, you set up views, and, of course, you actually do stuff with your data namely selects, inserts, and updates, of course. And this is all wrapped into um, the testing framework. So you can write tests on all these levels of the database, depending on how you look on your database. You might focus on totally different things. So on a very simple level, you create a table, and the table has stuff on it in some way or another, and you just um, start testing for simple things like existence. Um, is the table actually there? Um, uh, is this is um, in Postgres uh, the uh, simple public schema? If you don't create your own schema, you just work on the public schema. Um, you just create, for example, some role with um, specific um, grants and permissions, and you just ask over your tests if these things are really there. And if you look at this, you just ignore this part, for example, it's, it's basically just the same which you know from test more, for example. 
So um, all the, the, um, the language you're used to in power testing has, is, can, isn't, equals, not equals, um, all the stuff is all the same way here. So um, if you're going a little bit deeper and look at a specific table, for example, where you um, created the usual primary key, maybe you have a check and um, some default setting, you start asking a little bit deeper um, if your table actually has checks, for example, if your columns are these specific columns, um, if the table, for example, has a specific sequence, because um, we're using here a serial, and the serial creates automatically um, a, a sequence for this specific table. So you run all these tests. And if you run these tests, for example, um, stand alone without So this is, if you run it um, with uh, David Wheeler's proof, which is a specific postcards proof, it's not the proof proof, we already know. Um, this is the usual Perl style output you get, but you can also just run it directly via the PSQL command line, and this is what you get if you bypass the proof Concept, for example. So if you look at this, you're basically calling in Postgres database functions and get this as a result. Or you call it in top style, so it really actually works in all kinds of CD and CI tools like Jenkins and um, whatever you've got. So, um, <coughs> If you look a little bit deeper, even more onto your columns, for example, you have all kinds of checks here as well. Um, you ask, for example, if a column is actually a primary key, if the column has, um, has to be non, not null, um, you ask, of course, because we are in the database, you ask a lot for types. So um, if you start writing tests, you will have, of course, a lot of um, checking up on which type your column actually has. So um, this is something, um, you, this is of course different in, 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 in database stuff than in Perl, you have to care for your types. And um, if in doubt, um, if specifically in Postgres return stuff, you really have to look up what Postgres functions, for example, specifically return because you later need for comparison the very exact type. This is one little nuisance because um, if you're not used to it, you get it usually wrong. So um, you test, for example, for foreign key relationships. This is basically a shortcut which um, says if this table has um, this column and this refers to this table and this column, so you can test in one simple test the actual relationships between your tables. And this is, for example, very nice because um, at some point you've got a lot of them. So, mm, then you go a little more specific and test, for example, for specific checks. Um, I've made a cat database where you have to um, put in the uh, country code as two um, characters, and um, the, if you insert the date, it's um, automatically the birthday and assumes your cat is born today. So, um, you check, um, you test for the usual column type, of course, um, you test for if the column has this has a specific check on, uh, if this table has a check on this specific column, you will ask, for example, for uh, default values. Um, you usually create a lot of, um, if depending on your tables, you create, of course, a lot of default values to make things easier. So this, of, of course, you can test, and then you can test um, what kind of default you may have on some column. So you all run this, you get the usual tab output or not, um, and then you can of course test 
in triggers, so which are sometimes a combination um, of a function you can test and of a trigger um, where you test if you've got the trigger assigned together with this function. So um, this is the simplest thing I could come up with. So you're creating a timestamp trigger um, and assign it to a specific um, table so um, that every time um, a cat gets updated on its traits and traits and characteristics, um, you create the usual updated um, information along with it. So you ask here if this function actually exists. For example, you, um, because Postgres um, supports so many languages, you can um, use Perl in Postgres, um, Node.js S in Postgres, Python in Postgres, PLS in Postgres, and um, I think L by now is all, also available in Postgres. So you can ask if this is the right language the function is written in. Um, you can, of course, ask um, what the function returns, if this is what you expect. And, um, then you ask if the trigger is assigned properly together with the, uh, with the function you've just written. So you're getting more and more deeper into what your whole database consists of. And um, in the end, if you, I mean, leaving out a lot of options here, for example, the whole grants and roles and permissions thing, you can test all of this too. I have, will not say a word about testing of indexes, for example. It's a whole, your own world, how much indexes you use and how you're using them, and there's tests for all of this. So, um, in the end, you go, of course, to actually handling data. So, um, if you have your table, and um, if your table has, for example, here, this little check constraint, you're expecting two things to test. You're expecting a valid insert, which isn't supposed to fail, but of course you also want to test if your check, for example, actually rejects data. So you usually start to test these things in pairs. One valid thing, which you expect to succeed, which is life okay. So inserting a new catch should simply be okay. And then you test, of course, um, the opposite, a froze okay. So you are inserting something invalid deliberately and expect the specific um, return what you are violating. So um, if you you can test, of course, a lot of a lot of things more on this. For example, um, if um, I would have a function which checks if the country code is a valid country code, for example valid top level domain or valid ISO country code or whatever we assign as a valid code. I could write a function and another check for example to it and also test all the flows I can think of. Especially in Europe I'm writing a lot of um, Unicode and um, Umlaut failure flows so that you insert data somewhere which doesn't contain a certain range of characters, for example, or just um, weird characters. So this is, this is all, in the end, it's testing for your data consistency, more or less. So um, then, of course, if your inserts succeed, you actually try to select things. So in this is um, where you, uh, you, write, you, you write a prepared statement, simply select in this case. And you test on the results, and here gets, for example, the uh, type really important. So whatever you assign to your column has to be um, reflected here. So, um, and then there's a different variety how you test your re results. Um, if you really use results, it means um, you get it back in an ordered. Uh, in an unordered way, but you're checking for an order. So if you don't use um, here something um, on your statement, you need to, uh, for example, use um, a set or a bag instead. If order in your case doesn't matter, if you're expecting more than one result, um, if, uh, for example, you have, you expect valid duplicates and they don't matter, if you expect um, valid duplicates and they're supposed to be specific duplicates, 
So there's a whole lot of variety in it um, where you can uh, actually test your selects. And a very nice goodie, which is of course database relevant, is um, performs okay. Um, you write a test where you say you expect that this query doesn't take longer than x milliseconds and run a test on it, which is of course a very nice thing for a database to do this. So this is um, a variety of um, testing stuff you get all with um, a simple create extension pgeta on the Okay. Um, which you simply get by um, installing the code um, from um, Postgres has a very tiny, cute little CPAM thingy where you can download extensions. And um, you just uh, install it by, uh, you install it and then create the extension pgeta on the database and um, just have it. If you install um, pgproof, which is actually on CPAM, um, along with it, you get the nice and shiny top output we used to in Paul. Um, but you don't have to. You can run a different testing style, um, the usual XY unit testing style, which uh, David Wheeler has uh, checked out in his documentation. So, um, what makes Piggy top so nice to use is that you actually just whip up a lot of tests. So, and that's not even complete testing of the two super simple tables I've written for the presentation. It's just chunks of it. You can, um, so I'm only testing, for example, two columns and not all of them. And failing tests are specifically interesting um, to capture because um, if you have, um, you're able to test for uh, not just existent if something is there, but you're also able to test um, if specifically only this is really there and not more. So um, if you're testing, for example, for your columns, you can um, use testing functions in Pigeta which um, exclude additional columns which are found, but you're not testing for. So you can um, say, do I actually have this column? But you can also say, I don't want to have more than those columns. So there's um, a whole lot of um, viewpoints involved um, to test. So looking at um, things you actually have or things you actually don't want to have things you want from your results and things you want to really want to fail and test for. And that's really nicely done in Figita. Um, someone asked for speed and um, this is of course uh, your selects and inserts and um, all the queries take as long as they usually take of course but um, all in all if you run the whole shebang of um, a couple of hundred tests, it's really fast, it's, it takes seconds. Um, what is not included in PGTA um, is the whole testing concept, how you deal with testing and databases. So do you um, use a backup copy and test on this? Do you use your production database and test on this? Um, are you writing, uh, uh, do you set up a whole new database and at only fake test data in it. Um, someone else asked for um, SQLite support because a lot of people um, work up their database, database tests in SQLite and just um, throw some data in, um, set it up and tear it down and throw it just away, which is so far not possible because I think there is no top for SQLite yet. But I'm pretty sure. What? Jesus! <laughs> okay, yes, 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 I'm done. So, um, this is just, um, we're using this um, on office code, and I'm around 600 tests or so by now, and it's really, I can highly recommend it, it's very nicely documented, it's really, really easy to learn, I 
everybody can, can whip up a couple of has this column, has that column, it has this restraint. It's, so um, if you're focusing on functions, for example, um, it gets a little bit more complicated, but it's all perfectly easy to learn. It's, it's a half day's work, not more. So um, I would be happy if you start using it because very few people so far actually do. So it's all now. Okay. Yep. Hmm? One second.